What is up guys, this is Asunox. we've got the patch notes here, the 12th of March. Kaurik is coming, and there's an artifact with him, I'll review him quickly. I did my early thoughts about him and ML Charlotte, so he's coming out in like a few hours. ML Charlotte is going to be a week, uh, in one week. So uh, here we go. So Kaurik here, new 5 star hero, he's a mage. Fire element, introducing, uh, introducing Kaurik video here, I mean uh, you guys can go check it out, it's uh, it's gonna be in the description of the video, the official, uh, well, video for him, and uh, let's look at his skills here, so the second skill, Dimensional Corridor, uh, dispels one buff before increasing skill cooldowns, right, so it's only gonna dispel one buff and increase cooldown twice it's not actually dispelling a buff increasing cooldown and then uh, dispelling another buff and then increasing cooldown like I thought it would be doing so yeah this allows him to stop dangerous enemies from using their skills while also dealing damage proportional to the enemy speed this skill number two deals insane damage I have my, uh, the multipliers here for him actually so skill one is 168 it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty basic, 168%, but it scales with his uh, speed, which uh, increases the damage even further. 200 speed on him would give 15% additional damage. 250 speed on him is 18.75% additional damage, guys. If you do have speed buff, well, it's going to increase your speed by 30% more, increasing the damage even further. So keep that in mind. After skill ups on this thing, you have a 75% chance to silence for one turn. Very powerful mechanic. Uh, you're gonna need some effectiveness on him to really use this thing in uh, in PvP. For PvE, uh, I mean, almost all bosses are immune to silence, so it's not gonna be so useful there. Uh, out of his kit, to be honest, like the fact that the, that he doesn't really have, well, he doesn't have a debuff besides silence. So in PvE, this is actually helpful for stages where you don't want to actually land any debuff. So that's great for him. Uh, talking about his stats real quick, he actually has uh, 1,306 attack. So really high amount of attack is going to be great. Uh, paired with his speed of 119. So this is going to inflate his CP. He's going to have really high offensive power, uh, especially in PvE, it's gonna be great. Uh, his kit is actually uh, quite powerful for PvE. Uh, I'll talk about him in PvP, of course. 4,248 health is actually low, but that's how it goes for mages. 652 defense is, well, mages have more defense than health uh, usually. So yeah, I mean, uh, his survival is not so high but his offensive power definitely makes up for it so this skill number two right here ignores effect resistance and this is extremely powerful you could wear a uh, taggy hills ancient book on himself or uh well another mage on the team which would gives you uh, like 20 souls meaning that you can just soul burn on turn one in pvp allowing you to uh well ignore effect resistance so very very powerful he can be used against Bazaar. Bazaar has 108 speed. You could make him very fast, go first, and remove the uh, immunity set, the uh, immunity buff on uh, on Bazaar, and then increase his skilled cooldown by one turn twice. So you would delay his uh, annoying skill three and two, buying you enough time for you to deal with him or just start messing up with uh, his team because Bazaar is extremely, extremely powerful, and if you can put his stuff on cooldown, that is very, very great. But the damage on skill three is low, the damage on skill two is, is very high. So skill number uh, two has a multiplier of 262%, but the kicker is the damage increases uh, the higher the target's speed is. So if the target has 200 speed, you are gonna be dealing an additional 60% damage. That is crazy. If the target has 250 speed, you are dealing an additional 75% damage. Man, I love this. And you could also, I mean, build him as a damage dealer. The thing is, 
you shouldn't try to cleave with him because his damage on skill 2 is not high. You know, the AoE on this is definitely not going to be hurting much. And you've got that condition to penetrate defense by 30%. You need to have speed buff. So if you want to cleave with him, you're going to have to apply the speed buff first. Uh, which is definitely an issue and penetrate defense by 30% uh, even with his, like his multiplier is not high enough so yeah so skill 3 has a multiplier of 142% it's low and with the speed um, yeah with 200 speed you're gonna deal 15% additional damage and of course you will penetrate uh, you, you know defense by 30% if you have the speed buff if you don't have it like you, you lose that that portion that chunk of damage right uh, if you do have the speed buff you will have 30% more speed so of course the multiplier is going to be higher on the uh, you know the speed multiplier is going to be higher so if you do like let's say you have 200 speed on him initially if you have the speed buff that's 260 speed now so it's going to be uh, you know, dealing 19.5% damage instead of 15%. It's not that much. It's it's a bit extra. Uh, so yeah, I, I feel like he should be used for killing, you know, speedy heroes with his skill too. Uh, potentially maybe landing a silence here and there with, uh, with uh, skill 1 on longer battles in PvP. Um, so yeah. Now, uh, for awakening him... And for skilling him up, guys, you will need a 36 Flame of Soul. And, uh, well, for the skill ups, you will need 6 Demon Blood Gems. And for Awakening him, you will need 15 Eternal Forest Dust and 6 Demon Blood Gems. If you, uh, well, you still have a bit of time to uh, farm up these things if you're going to be pulling for him. So the question is, guys, are you going to pull for Kyrick? I will be pulling myself. I will be pulling... Uh, on my account number 3 on the Europe server, I will be showcasing him in PvE and in PvP. So if you're on the fence about pulling for him, you know, check out my uh, showcases. And, uh, well, might give you, uh, you know, uh, well, maybe you're going to be pulling after, maybe not. Uh, he's not limited, so of course, you sh like in most cases, you should be saving your Covenant bookmarks. But if he's going to be feeling like something uh, that you're missing, right? If you, in your roster, you don't have options to deal with maybe Bazaar. You know, maybe you want to throw your best speed gear on him to outspeed Bazaar. Maybe you're going to be using memory imprint or imprints, speed memory imprints to outspeed Bazaar. And just go with him and use skill 2 on Bazaar, you know, uh, with the uh, maybe the ignore effect resistance. So you actually bypass the 15% innate uh resist built into the game that is huge guys that is huge uh the soul burn that 15 percent innate resist is a massive issue uh i mean it's 50 percent right but it seems to be happening i don't know it, it seems to be more than 50 percent <sighs> so the artifact here black hand of the goddess i'll give more thoughts about uh Karik, uh in, in a few minutes i just want to go through the patch notes of course so black hand of the goddess it's actually quite powerful um, but you do lose value as you as you gain more turns, right? So when this thing is maxed out, your critical hit chance will increase by 24% at the start of the battle, and the effect decreases by 2.4% every time the caster attacks, down to 12%. This is of course when it's maxed, and at with just one copy at plus 15 is going to be the values between uh, level one and max. So basically, you're going to have 18% crit chance initially, and then you will be losing 1.8% uh, crit chance every time that you attack, right? And uh, it will go down to, uh, well, between that, it's going to be 9%. But it says every time the caster attacks. So that means if you're triggering a dual attack, or you have, I don't know, maybe you have a counter set on the hero wearing this thing, uh, it's not every... Yeah, it's not every uh, turn, it is every time the caster attacks. So I feel like it should uh, reduce the effect, even on a, you know, a dual attack and stuff like that. And counter. Okay, so drop rate up. Yes, and uh, this is going to last for two weeks. Side story requirem, uh, requirem for the Forsaken. So uh, let's see what we can actually obtain here. It should be catalysts. And, uh, you know, the runes for him. So he's going to have 50% attack, health, and defense increase. 
And uh, here they are. Well, yeah, the catalysts are here. So if you didn't farm, well, you can get a good portion out of this. Of course, it's not all of them, but it's still a good portion. What do we have here? Other improvements. Abyss Floor 91 to 100 additional statistics and formation. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be uh, added in the game. Uh, basically, when the patch goes online. Okay, so, Karik, like I said, yeah, very, he's gonna be great in PvE. Uh, I mean, he's fire, right? So, of course, bringing him in Banshee is not gonna be uh, viable, right? Uh, but I, I do like that he's able to dispel, meaning I'll be trying him out in uh, Azimatic Hunt. Uh, can't wait to see how he performs there. And the thing is, uh, like I said, the Salah is not going to be an issue. Uh, you know, I mean, you could use that against ads, right, and silence them. Um, you can you can deal great single target damage with skill too. Uh, lock down the boss. That's the greatest thing to me. Being able to increase skill cooldown by one turn twice is going to be huge. Uh, in all sorts of PV content. Uh, I mean, bosses not being able to use their skills is huge. And with a uh, high speed on him and a uh, like 55% effectiveness is what you want to uh, aim for in PVE. And the fact that he's getting, you know, uh, speed buff. The fact that he's getting speed buff here with uh, the skill two for two turns is very good. And... Uh, You've got a four turn cooldown on this on this thing. You don't have a uh, minus one turn cooldown from the skill ups because that would be uh, very good. That would be too powerful, I would say. That's why it's not there. But the damage on this thing is crazy. If you want to see some numbers, uh, I have a, a video called uh, you know skill multipliers for ML Charlotte and Kaurik. And uh, yeah, you can see some uh, numbers through a tool, a calculator using different speeds and uh, amounts of attack and critical hit damage to give you an understanding of, uh, well, what kind of values you, you're going to be seeing out of him. But of course, I'll be doing some showcases, so uh, stay tuned for that, of course. Uh, in raids, he actually has good morale uh, synergy with uh, other heroes, so you can definitely use him there. He has an AoE with uh, skill 3. I feel like the AI, the artificial intelligence of the game, will be using skill 2 first before using skill 3 because there's that requirement of having speed buff on skill 3. So I feel like they have this built in, uh, built in with uh, this hero, but I need to test him, right? Of course, to be sure that's how it works. So, of course, stay tuned for those videos. Uh, but I feel like he's going to be using skill 2 first before skill 3, which is definitely going to be great, and uh, which is going to, well, allow him to deal more damage. And uh, the penetrate 30% defense is going to be great too, uh, allowing him to uh, do some extra cleave damage. And you don't, uh, potentially don't need defense down, you know, debuff uh, part of your, like, raid team with him. Uh, so that's... Another thing that is pretty good. I mean, it's not a full like 70% uh, defense reduction, right? With uh, his uh, skill three, but I mean, it's definitely gonna be helpful against uh, targets with a uh, higher amount of uh, defense. The, the fact that he has a 1300 attack is definitely gonna be super good. 119 speed, man, it's, it's definitely uh, amazing. And uh, he, he's the fastest speed, actually, uh, mage in the game. Uh, so anyways, definitely check out my showcases if you're on the fence uh, to pull for him. His memory imprints are actually, like, uh, its self uh, attack percentage increase or, uh, you know, increase the attack of your teammates. Uh, not for himself, for the team-wide one. Well, it doesn't include himself. So, yeah. So that's kill number three. Uh, I was talking about the multiplier on this. 142% is actually low. Uh, 200 speed is 15% additional damage. Nothing crazy, but of course you're gonna have the 30% penetrate defense on top. So it should definitely add a decent amount of damage. You've got 30% uh, damage increase from skill ups. I'll actually plus 15 Kaurik to show you guys like his true damage potential. So definitely uh, stay tuned for that. 
Um, with 250 speed, you're going to be dealing 18.75% additional damage. Uh, if you do have the speed buff, 30% more is 325 speed. So that's 24.375% additional damage. Uh, nothing insane. Of course, building him on a speed set with, uh, like, let's say, speed critical hit set would be, uh, well, the way to go if you want to maximize... Uh, you know, on your stats in PvE and speed set, of course, for PvP is going to be great. If you want to initialize with him, like I said, uh, go speed and, of course, go crazy uh, with uh, your speed sub stats. So speed set on your two-piece could be, I mean, up in the air, really. Uh, if you're going to be relying on Tagil's Ancient Book to Soul Burn skill too, then you don't need to build up a bunch of effectiveness. So you could avoid wearing like a, a two-piece hit set. You could avoid uh, just having effectiveness on your gear. You just... You could just go crazy and just have the best speed. You don't have to worry about your damage. Your damage, the thing is that you have to understand is skill 2 will not be able to down Bazaar. Uh, especially if you're building maximum speed on him. You're not going to be able to kill Bazaar uh, straight up. Uh, even, uh, I tested it with uh, high speed and even pretty high amount of attack, you know, and critical hit damage on him. Uh, of course, 100% crit chance. Against Bazaar, you only need 85% crit chance because you are at Elemental Advantage with 15% additional crit chance. So even with like pretty high offense, which is going to be hard to actually achieve because if you're aiming for high speed, uh, then you have to uh, get a necklace with uh, critical hit chance or even critical hit damage if you're super lucky with uh, your substats. Uh, let's say you have a bunch of crit chance there. Uh, still, it's going to be way too hard. Uh, you can't do it. You're not going to have defense break. So you can't land the one shot on Bazaar. But the thing is, uh, of course, you're going to be able to dispel. You're going to be dealing damage. Let's say there's a fall on Cecilio, right? Uh, you're going to have to deal with uh, barrier and uh, debuff immunity. The thing is, damage is dealt first. So you're going to be able to at least break the barrier, right? From uh, off uh, fall on Cecilia. On, uh, on Bazaar, let's say, let's say we're talking about Bazaar, but you can definitely use skill too against uh, plenty of other heroes that you're scared that they go first and mess up your team, right? Or apply some kind of buff, like a mate glory or whatever. So yeah, you're gonna be able to break the, the barrier with the damage and then you're gonna be dispelling one buff, AKA it's gonna be the immunity buff, and then you will increase skill cooldown uh, by one turn twice. So it's good that it's happening twice. So let's say you didn't soul burn this thing, for the ignore effect resistance, you have two chances to actually increase skill cooldown. So maybe one gets resisted and the other one actually lands. So that's pretty solid in PvE. Of course, you've got to deal with that 15% innate resist. So uh, that's good. It's happening twice. But the Prime, of course, he's fire. So you can't really bring him against uh, heavy ice battles. Uh, you know, if the boss is ice, you at least have two chances to potentially have one land. Uh, so that's not so bad, but of course I do not recommend bringing him, uh, bringing him uh, versus uh, you know an ice boss. So in raid you're gonna be uh, in the clear there, so that's good. Uh, for now, I mean uh, maybe Ottoman Tower, uh, Ottoman Tower hard. You can use him in the abyss, of course, it's gonna be uh, really helpful. Of course, uh, the survival stats are on the lower side, so you're gonna have to balance your stats. Um, you're gonna have to, uh, you know. I guess uh, test the waters with him. Maybe you need to up uh, his survival, drop his offensive power. The thing is, are you willing to have your best speed gear on this hero to actually uh, outspeed? The thing is, uh, what about like having your best speed on just on Bazaar, right? What about having your best speed on like a combat readiness boosting hero? Uh, there are so many other heroes in the game that could make great use of you know, speed, why should it be on Karik? Well, uh, that's something you're gonna have to figure out and maybe you have multiple speed sets, to be honest, in early to mid game, it's not gonna be something too, uh, you know, realistic. So that's definitely gonna be a hero that's gonna be shining more in late game, guys. So uh, you definitely should not be pulling for him only for the purpose of shutting down Bazaar because there's other options. I mean, you could just straight up outspeed Bazaar. Uh, you could be using fire heroes. There's different ways to deal with uh, Bazaar. I actually have a, a, a video talking about how to deal with uh, Bazaar. So you might want to check that out. Anyways, 
uh, that's enough for uh, my thoughts. Quick review for uh, Karik in this video. Uh, well, this was about patch notes, but uh, yeah, there's not so much in there. I just wanted to uh, give you guys that quick breakdown of Karik before I actually showcase him. So yeah, I'll be starting with uh, the poll video and then uh, going through uh, PV and PVP content with uh, you guys. I'll be releasing videos uh, fast, like every time there's one ready, I'll just release it. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be uh, coming out in quick succession. So stay tuned for that. Anyways, that's really it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'm Astronox. Like, comment, and subscribe for more. Press the bell icon for to be notified whenever I release a new video and check out my other videos. They should be showing up on the screen now. I got playlists of all sorts. Arena, Guild Wars, guys, sit and O2s and Abyss 4, 62 plus. So check those out if you haven't, as well as best starter guides for my early to mid game players for fast progression. Uh, you can check out my early uh, thoughts about uh, Kyrick and ML Charlotte if you want to hear some more in-depth stuff. If you want to see the numbers, check out my damage uh, multiplier video for him. Uh, so, yeah. All right. Uh, good luck with all you do and peace out for now. And let us know if you're going to be polling for him in the comment section, guys. Uh, definitely good luck with uh, your polls. Of course, he's not limited. I would, if you don't have the Covenant bookmarks, which is definitely uh, something that uh, could be uh, probable, right? Because you probably spend your bookmarks on limited series or, uh, you know, all the other tempting uh, heroes that uh, were before. So definitely check the showcases. Anyways, peace out for now.